So the next part is then, is how can we tell the system to change? Now he will change based on who I am. But Java code, when I one method calls another method, he doesn't know who the caller is. Because he has many different callers. But he want, and he, he can't recognize them. Now he could probably look up the stack and see the next frame, but that doesn't really tell him who the application is. So if I'm a hash map and I know I'm creating a new hash map, what size should I take? So typical hash maps will take about 16. Right. Uh, but what size should I be? If I know the guy that's coming in is going to add, on average, he always adds a thousand into the bucket, then I probably would like to create a thousand now rather than wait till my eventual right. growth. So what I can do then is, every time someone interacts with me, I create a signal set, you know, different signals. I might not just have one, but one of them will probably be, I resize the map and I give it back to him. And then every time he comes back to me and he says, okay, new hash map, this is a piece of code that's going to execute. There's a signal signature stored. Now I only understand it. I've given it to him, but he holds it. And he says, I, I, every time you, I talk to you, here it is. So the next time he might come in and request, if it's the same flow, I will have the same signal signature. I will look at the signal signature and say, oh, I know this guy. Or I know this person. He's and, the thousand guy. Yeah, he's that right. one. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to change my internal mechanism right. because I know what's going to predict. So, so for prediction to work, we always need to say is where am I? What is the what is the context for the prediction? And at the moment, bytecode can't predict what's going to happen next because it hasn't got an ability to see who is above, who is driving the work. But the, so the signal is like a kind of like a code. Here's the code, give it back to me, and I recognize you. And I think it's like a call center, like when you have, you're working in a call center and someone rings you, and it's a particular customer, if you had a previous interaction with them and it wasn't so good, you probably would change you know your behavior. How to so, okay, so sometimes you don't want the customer to know that you gave a signal that says, warning, <laughs> customer will. <laughs> Difficult so, guy. Yeah, so, but you might give them something back to say, give it back to me, and then I know who you are. Because you're going to have many, a hash map is going to have many callers, but if everybody gave a signal, then he can optimize himself. And that's how we create truly adaptive systems. That's how we can say, we don't have to worry about which ha hash map default size is. We let the system learn and try to predict it every time. And of course, the signal set will change. So when I give a signal into the hash map or into the context of the execution, he will try to do it. And if it didn't work out, he will create a new signals inside the signal set that I'll store. So this is how cells work in, in biological systems. Right. It's that they alter their own internal structures based on previous interactions. That's why they're called complex systems, because we can't predict what's coming next, because we need to know the past. Because the past has kind of infected or not kind of uh, uh, changed what the reaction will always be. You know, so it's a chemical reaction. We don't know what previous reaction is there and what the state is inside. And we don't want to look inside, but those signals are what's driving the biological system. So Java on applications need that. Wow, so this is mind-blowing stuff. Is this but theoretical uh, okay. slide no, where no, so, no, are no. you really this is, doing yeah, we running it we, now? We demonstrated how we can already change the behavior, how we can optimize. We're focused on performance in this regard, but I see this very applicable to, uh, to any type of system. But we, in the in the the demo today, I demonstrated the adaptiveness, controlling the workload, determining what's the optimal level of concurrency, and getting faster response times than the normal JVM running without changing code, mm, because okay. we made the system adaptive. So we're not going to change. We actually, at the moment, we enhance these applications with this. But there is a when we talk about the Java platform, well, that enhancement has to come in already in there. We're able to enhance typical uh, more at the application level, but really the enhancements would be better if they were put into all the Java libraries. That every library, every time it went a different pathway that's more expensive, that the guy had a signal that said, like, cache hit, cache mit. That's a signal. Every time you go to a, if you have a component that's a cache, if he goes to the database, that's a miss. And then, I, uh, and then when it's in memory, it's a hit. And if I could know that, then I can see that the ratio, and I can understand why my particular transactions are slower than other transactions because maybe they always hit the cache and the other ones have to hit the database mm -hmm. or something like that, some other right. external data grid. Okay, so that's the base, that's the first part. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first session. Oh then the, okay, so we build on that because, okay, so now we've got this application memory because signals represent a kind of a memory of the system that's external to the code because we can't put it in the code. We want the code 
to have this memory, but it's contextual, conversational. Everything, our view is that all data is conversational. That every part is like when you interact with a company, they, 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 you're a customer. That's a kind of a customer conversation. Then when you have a particular order, it's an it's a order conversation in, in the context of a customer. So everything becomes a tree structure of conversations. The whole world is a conversation, okay? And some conversations go on forever. So you're, you work for Oracle, you're, that's a conversation for a very long time probably. Right. And so, so it's not like the way we see a conversation is engaging. You know, they, they, they come and go, and you have sometimes customers that will only call you every year. And so, but that's a conversation that's still, it's a long running conversation. But every time you've interacted, you've learned a bit more about that customer, or you've maybe changed their behavior. No, like, so if you think about a service supplier, or like, like take a car dealer, I go into a car dealer, I ask for service on my car, let's say the service wasn't good, I'm unhappy, I make, make a complaint. The next time I go into that, I want him to remember who I am and to change his behavior, roll out the red carpet and give me a better service. You want that, at least, at least once to get the better service. Now, of course, then as soon as he gives me that, he's gonna change his behavior, because after that, I become a normal person because he's, he's already got rid of the previous history. He said, okay, I gave him a good service. Now, he can't expect it all the time. I jumped, you know, through loops or something for that. But, well, okay, so, so you see he's adapting. So, so even... So what you're saying is software is kind of stupid, right? Software is dumb because it's, it's memoryless. So th it hasn't got this memory. Okay, it has memory in terms of there's a database. Right. There's technical memory, but it doesn't have... Context. Context memory. Right. Con conversational. Okay, so we had that. Then, the, okay, the problem that we have is we're moving to the cloud and JVMs are coming up and down. This is the whole elasticity of the cloud that you can, applications can come up and they can come down because you're, 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 you're doing that because of capacity issues and you don't on cost because every JVM or a machine itself uh, consumes cost because you're renting it. And so everything becomes more transient. Now, and, and the, but the yeah, application is transient today because if I start a Java app, it starts up, if I shut it down and start it up again, it will do the same behavior. And let's say there's a, an error in it. Well, every time I start it up, it will probably crash. It's not gonna say, oh, I remember what I did I the last time. I'm not gonna time crash, I'm not gonna do that code. And the reason I can't do that is because there's nowhere there's a memory of it. Now, okay, so this is where we come to the next stage. This is, okay, where do I put that memory? Well, the answer is the matrix. Okay, okay. now we're so, getting really okay. freaky. So, <laughs> okay, so before I go into what the matrix is, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, William, I'm sorry, I gotta cut you <laughs> off, man, because we just want to give people a taste oh, okay. and not a complete brain dump okay. here. But I'm sure they can learn more okay. right, from you. Well, okay, well, very quickly, like, the matrix uh, is the memory for all the JVMs. So every time a JVM starts up, it connects mm -hmm. to this matrix, it's a single JVM, right. and it stores its memory. The memory in terms of behavior, not the data, not the database, nothing like that. And that's it, the memory. So, so when my JVM shuts down and, and starts back up, it connects and says, I am this JVM. And he says, here, you're Neo, you need, and he downloads his informational pack. And that's the signals that we've stored. So we have signals now in the, in the matrix, and the signals are brought back into the JVM, and the JVM looks like it has a memory. Wow, very cool. Thank you okay. so much. I'm going to cut you <laughs> off. No, my no, brain, my no. brain's blowing up here, so I really appreciate it. And um, we're going to get more information from you. I bet you I'm going to make you write an article or something okay, like that. Yeah. So thank you very much. Okay. This is Tori Wheel from the Oracle Technology Network. Thanks. <laughs>